when you do get that call and you realize you got to go, I guess, do your job, you have that pride and you, uh, you lace up your boots and you're like, all right, you know, this is what I raised my right hand for. At times, you know, you kind of kick yourself in the butt and you're like, what am I doing? When it's all said and done, you're like, I'd do it any day of the week. And to be able to still go hunting and do what I love, but still be part of the Air Force. You know, it's just very, very humbling. Being a guardsman, you, you can get called up anytime. When I can get out in the mountains and hunt or be with family, I have to cherish it, you know, because I, I just never know. It's my time. I, I'm, I gotta go do some stuff. I knew that I was gonna have to travel with the military this year, so decided, you know, I might as well put in just to get my bonus points and whatnot. And so, just my luck the year that I I have to travel that I draw a once in a lifetime tag. So are you sure? Well, we looked and I could, couldn't believe that he drew that permit. Putting in for that permit for myself and my sons for as long as it's been available. But lo and behold, he drew the permit. It couldn't have happened to, to, to a better guy. It absolutely couldn't have happened to a better guy. As soon as we knew that, everybody, all his friends, all his family, we were all looking now for, for bucks in that area. Getting, getting these bucks down to a schedule so that you know when he finally gets to the season, that short amount of time he has to hunt, he's got it figured out, so. Look at all that bone right there, just those three bucks in a row. And that's the one I was talking about with that split back fork. I mean, he's gorgeous too. He's got double split back forks. Adam's just a hunting machine, you know. He, very ethical hunter and I'm always seeing pictures of you know what he's doing and how he's helping people and I was getting nervous because I didn't have the best resources to you know get permission and I knew he drew the tag a couple years before that. One of my favorite landowners Kathy is I met her a couple years ago when I had the tag and she was gracious enough to let me come onto her property and hunt when I had the tag and she was super ecstatic about letting Mike on. She said, I'd, I'd love to have him come here. And she's a hunter herself and uh, does a lot of archery hunting too. And she just, she's like, one of these days I'll draw this tag. But until then, it's just awesome to see other hunters like that, instead of closing their doors, opening her arms, opening her doors and saying, come on and, and harvest one of these animals. And Mike's circumstances, only having a number of days to hunt Yes, I'm on board. My son served in Iraq. I know what it is to serve your country, and I totally thank him and respect him for that. And absolutely, he's my hunter. He's my shooter. That night, we go over to her house and get to meet her and talk with her. And sure enough, all the bucks are sitting in their yard, and they were eating apples and scraping on her trees. She gave me permission to, you know, tear down her corral or you know, do whatever I want in order to, for me to harvest a buck. You know, that, that was huge. I just felt like I had to do it. Like this, this was the area I was gonna hunt. I was gonna put my time and I guess all my, my resources into her place. You can have a spot that you're hunting these, these deer and you're legal on a property that you have permission, but within five minutes, they'll be on somebody else's property that you don't have permission. Look at that one. There's only 25 tags given out for this area, but those 25 people are gonna hammer it right off the bat. These deer, as soon as that season starts, that they start to move around and their schedule does change. And The animals were hanging there. They were bedding there, they had food, they had water, they had shelter. All it takes is one field getting cut 
to change the whole pattern of these animals, and that was kind of the case. The wheat fields were getting cut, alfalfa fields were getting cut, the hay fields were all getting cut. So all around us, these dynamics were changing. Montana Full Circle is brought to you by Buffalo Boar Ammunition, Montana Department of Agriculture, Rocky Mountain Natural Beef, Leupold, Zenic, and these other fine sponsors. Buffalo Boar Ammunition is premium grade ammunition. It is the most powerful and accurate ammunition made anywhere. Our loads are purpose designed. When the moment of need arises, you are prepared. We make the world's best self-defense pistol ammunition as well as hunting ammunition. Order factory direct at buffalobore.com. This segment of Montana Full Circle is brought to you by the Montana Department of Agriculture and the Valley County Weed District. For more information about noxious weeds and vegetation management, contact the Montana Department of Agriculture or your local noxious weed department. I'm really nervous, but I'm excited. It's been a long time coming. Weeks on weeks on weeks and morning and night looking and spotting. And night before opener, I need to go check on these bucks. I just need to make sure they're still there. I mean, I pretty much I had them patterned down to a T. They they were going by her house. They were going out to the you know the fields. This is gonna be great. You've been watching them all summer, and you think you know where they're headed, how things are taken down in the summer crops wise, or kind it kind of determines where the deer are gonna head next. There was no bucks to be seen. I'm gonna have to switch my whole game plan. Last night we came in here, didn't see him. I was heartbroken of all that stalking and spotting and pictures and videos. And I thought for sure he's blown up, but 80 yards out, he's bedded down. Put a stock on. Opening morning, we, Dad and I came out, and you know it, it was pretty awesome to have him there to be able to watch me spot and stock these bucks and the bucks that I've been talking about all summer long. You know, and finally, uh, you know he got to see what you know I was seeing. You know, the, my boys, I would pick them up to go hunting, but. That morning he picked me up 5.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning and we went to go deer hunting for him. You know, and it wasn't me running the show and it just made me realize that it's kind of full circle. You know, it's really come around. Well, Mike was doing a belly crawl. The doe and fawns that we thought kept walking bedded down right where they shouldn't have. I don't think they're too spooked. They just kind of watch the does go off. And We'll just see if these bugs bed back down and see what, see what kind of thing Mike's got. Mike's on his own now. We're in a total different location. I was right there, shooting range. I was ready to, ready to shoot. I, was, I ranged him at 30, and uh, a buck stood up before he did and pinned me. And, I mean, I was busted. They all jumped and blew out of there. And, so I, I laid down for a little bit. I was like, you know, there's no point in me getting up. Maybe they'll feed back by. And, and uh, I keep looking up and looking up, and it looks like they're feeding towards me. And so I lay down and wait and wait, and then all of a sudden I look up, and 10 yards from me, there's a little, little dinky spike. Man, and he just, he just kept nosing in, trying to figure out what I was, and he blew the whole thing into pieces. He, he came over and then blew up and they were all gone. They bolted, I mean, they, they went out of the country. They, they, they went out of the field that I could hunt, the area that I could hunt. And uh, I just thought it was over. I, I didn't, think, didn't think I had another chance. You know, they, they were long gone. 
and there you go. It goes from being super excited, you got exactly all this work you worked for all summer long, the animal's there, and like that it all changes, animals are gone. It was the fact that I, I had to take time away from my family and friends, you know, it, it was a special tag and I really wanted to harvest the trophy buck, but that's mornings and nights that I was away from family. And it started weighing on me. You know, I, I gotta stock these bucks, I gotta get in on them. I really need to get this over with. I, it, it's stressful, you know, but it was something I really wanted. If you want to provide hunters with more opportunities than anyone else, you have to be willing to go where nobody else has been. The Apex Ground Blind from Zenic has gone to the next level to maximize shooting opportunities with the use of a window system that puts the Apex Ground Blind at the top. This segment of Montana Full Circle is brought to you by Rocky Mountain Natural Beef. Find us on Facebook to order now. We decided that, you know, we might as well check out that field again. I was a little bummed out that we blew him out the next, you know, that day before, and so I was like, oh, there's no way, there's no way the bucks are going to be in there. But, you know, we put so much time and effort into scouting that area. I was like, let's just go check. There's no way. I never even thought for a second they'd be in that field. Dude, this is the one you've been watching all summer long. We've got video, we've got all kinds of pictures of him all summer. And uh, this is number one on the hit list, and he's back. So, game on. So knowing that my time was so short, you know, it, it, was, it was awesome to be able to scout with Lori. And, you know, so she got to, you know, get to know the Bucks as, as I was, you know. So for us to be able to hunt together, you know, go out and actually you know, be side by side, and you know, that was pretty special to be able to, to be able to share that moment, I guess. He was just really bummed and paranoid. He did not think that they were gonna be coming back. He was like, we're gonna have to find a new place to hunt. We're gonna have to ask for permission all over again, you know, start from day one. So the fact that they were there that next morning was really cool, so. They're all bedded down, let me. Let me see my best route. I decided, you know, this is it. So I yanked my shoes off and decided I'm going in quiet. I, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do a, a long day of just inching my way into this buck. And... Well, it's round three. Got him spotted over there. So we're just gonna kind of sit here and wait and uh, watch Mike work his way in and see what the bucks do. While we were watching Mike stock up, we were able to spend quite a bit of, of quality time with Lori sitting there in the blind and, and just she was super intense. She was so nervous and we were in there just joking around, having a great time. And You see him? No, I'm not. If I miss this shot, so help me. Someone's going to die. You're closest to but I was paranoid that the shoot was gonna happen, the hunt was gonna happen, and it was gonna be over that hill that I couldn't see. He's a patient man. Seriously. Yeah, you know, it definitely tested my, my patience, for sure. You know, I, I'd move 20 feet, and then all of a sudden the buck would stand up. And he'd start milling around and feeding, and it's like, well, I can't move now. Had to wait for him to bed down, and then he would bed down, and then he'd move another 20 feet. And, you know, so it was just a waiting game. Uh, once again, I, I snuck in, and I was about 30 yards from some shooter bucks, and I, I was just like trying to calm myself down. All of a sudden, every buck was on its feet, and they bolted down the hill. There goes trash. Shoot. <laughs> I was kind of in shock. Do I stay here? Do I keep creeping in? Or what do I do? And, I just kind of 
took a little break. This whole whole hunt all around was just super intense, you know, knowing knowing what was about to come and, and Mike was gonna get deployed. For some reason, I don't know what reason it was other than this whole event was supposed to unfold as it did. The bucks start coming right back up the fence line, right towards Mike. They're single filing right to me. That's it. I was like, they're gonna be right here. And within minutes, they were 30 yards from me. And Take deep breath. You, know, you got this. You know, practiced all summer long shooting my bow, you know, day after day after day. And I was comfortable, you know, I just had to, had to make it happen. I got this image burnt in my brain. As this buck is running through, I see Mike in the background, both fists in the air, his bow in one hand, arms up, and this buck goes running between us and Mike, and Mike's arms are just in the air with a smile on his face. Montana Full Circle is brought to you by Buffalo Boar Ammunition, Montana Department of Agriculture, Rocky Mountain Natural Beef, Leupold, Zenic, and these other fine sponsors. Lupul Gold Ring Optics are built to perform at the highest level. Every shot, every hunt, every competition, every situation. They're guaranteed for a lifetime of performance. Because failure is not an option. You need total confidence in every moment. Something other optics can't deliver. That's the power of a true lifetime guarantee. And 650 of us stand behind it forever. Closed captioning provided by Bitterit Brewing. After the hunt, enjoy Montana's last best brew. You know, I, I couldn't, couldn't think, couldn't speak. I just did it. I killed a 190-inch muley with my bow. Oh, dude, that look at that perfect shot. You you couldn't have put you couldn't put that arrow in a better spot, man. It's a nice buck. We went over there. I got to put my hands on the buck, and I I I don't even know what to say. It was I was so speechless. You know, you're walking up on this buck and you see the rack just over the alfalfa, you know, and what a dandy you got. I mean, look at that mass he's got. He just carries it all the way through. I mean, he, look at that. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a stud. That's a big buck. He, he is a giant. And talk about character. Yeah. You know, all the stuff up in front, he's just gnarly. And I mean, look at those bases. I mean, look at that. I literally stood there. Tear rolled down my face and I was like, holy cow. I just did it. Incredible. Couldn't ask for a better day either. No, absolutely gorgeous. Awesome. He put so much time and energy into it. You just want it so bad for that person, you know, like they want this so bad, so therefore I want it for them type thing. Well, yeah, I get the call that he's got one down. Me and my dad both jump into the cruiser and we we're flying their Mach 9 ready to see this monster buck and they're just monstrous. And the bodies on those things, you know, they definitely ate well. I mean, he was a small cow elk, he was just huge. And boy, I tell you what, I saw that deer and the mass on that, that deer, I, it was just like, I couldn't have been more happy for him. It's just something about having one of your sons, you know, get something like that. I, boy, I, it choked me up, it really did, because I knew that I'd been doing something right with these boys.
it was speechless, man. The whole, the whole hunt. Just very, very blessed to be able to do it. The day he leaves, you know, and we've talked about it, like when do you say goodbye? You know, and how do you go about it? It's gonna be sad, but it's super bittersweet. With the whole proud thing, I mean, it's just that he gets to go over, you know, overseas and serve his country, it just makes your heart swell. But then you're sad that they have to go, you know, you're sad that they have to leave you. So, you know, the bitterness is I'm being selfish and I want you, I want you to stay. Uh, but the sweet part is, you know, that I'm very proud of you and that you're serving your country. Being in the guard's always something that he wanted to do. I know that if there's anybody that can take care of themselves overseas, it's gonna be him. So I've always kind of been okay with it and it's a very hard, hard thing for any parent to go through to, to know that, but but then there's that un, you know that underlying pride that just uh, you know you can't can't explain. I mean, it's I couldn't think of anything more that I would have been more proud to have a son do. You know, and you know my family is just the world to me. They're the most important things in my life. To have a son that would go and do something like that, you know, it's a very big thing. Pretty proud of him, really proud of him. As I'm gone, that's one, that's one more thing that I get to cherish, you know, one more thing that I know back home I got, I have a house. I have a buck that's waiting for me, you know, I have, I have a family, friends. It's, it's, it's all the little things that you cherish, you know, and um, for me to be able to harvest that right before I leave, it's huge. It's huge. That's, you know, pictures to brag to your buddies about and new people that you meet. And this is what I do back home. It, it, there is a reason why I drew it this year. You know, it's just one more thing to keep my mind on back home, you know. Well, Mike, I just want to say I, I hope you're safe over there and, uh, you know, you weigh on our minds. We think about you and really appreciate what you're doing for us over there. You and the rest of the military that's over there overseas risking yourselves for, for our freedoms and, and uh, we're thinking about you.